Hey what's up creators, today we're going to be showing you how you can set up movement animations for your shooter game. For this we're going to be creating a blend space to blend between different animations such as idling, walking and sprinting and we're then going to be bringing all of this together in an animation blueprint. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do inside of Unreal Engine is we actually need to find the animations that we're going to be using. For us, this is inside of our content, FPS assets, arms, and then arm animations. Inside of here, if we expand our content browser, we can see we have got our arms sprint, arms walk, and our arms idle. And if I go ahead and open these up, you can see we've got different speeds. So when we're idling, he's just breathing very slowly. When we open up our walk, we can see there is some slight movement there. And then when we get over to sprinting, you can see there is quite a lot of movement there and it's going to look really nice. So what we need to do is create an animation blend space, which is actually going to blend between those three different animations based on the speed of the character. To do this, we're going to go into our content browser and we're going to right click. And with this, we are going to go to animation and we are going to be creating an animation blend space. And with this, because we're not using any kind of um, rotation or anything other than just one variable, we're going to be using a blend space 1D. Go ahead and create this and choose your mesh arms as the skeleton for this. So SK underscore mannequin underscore arms underscore skeleton. And then we're going to be giving this the name movement underscore blend space or underscore BS, which is the naming convention we can use for this. And then we can go ahead and open this up. What you're going to see inside of here is you've got your arms, you've got your weapon, and we've also got a track for us to plot this along and lots of details on the right hand side here. For those of you that have not used an animation blend space before, don't be put off by this. It's really straightforward. We've just got one grid, which you can see at the bottom there, and we can just plot points with different animations according to the speed of the character. Really straightforward, let's go ahead and set it up. So the first thing we need to do then is we need to go over to the left hand side and we need to go to our axis settings. If we go ahead and expand this, we can set a name. It's currently set to none. And if we look down at the bottom here, it's currently set to none down there. We're going to be having an axis which is just called speed. And now, as such, I can just plot animations along my speed axis. So my minimum axis value is going to be zero, so when we're not moving, and then our maximum value here is going to be 800, which is when we are sprinting. So make sure you set your minimum axis value to zero and your maximum axis value to 800. Once we've done this, we're ready to start plotting animations. So we can see speed, zero, we've got nothing there. So on the right hand side in our asset browser, let's go ahead and find our arms underscore idle. And we're just going to drag this on to the very first point there. And now you can see it's just going to play that idle animation. Now let's go ahead and take our arms underscore walk. We can again plot this onto our graph anywhere we like. So you can see there, I've just plotted it on once we get to about 70 speed. But what I can see now is that when we get to this speed at 70, it's going to start walking. What I'm also going to do is plot that walk in there again at around 300 speed or yeah 300 speed because when it gets to 300 speed what I want to happen is for the player to begin building up to that sprint which is going to be at the full animation once we get to about 800 speed. So what you should have is going to look like this. We have zero for our idle, we have walk at around 70 which is pretty slow and then they continue to walk up until about 300 speed and then between 300 and the point over here at 800 we're going to be building up and blending in to that sprinting animation which is really straightforwards. 
Now, if we want to, we can preview this to see what it's going to look like. To do that, you hold down control and then just move your cursor along this. So we can see zero speed, it's idling, and then it start building up to the walk, slide along more, it's still walking, and then eventually it starts to build up to that sprint that you can see there. Awesome. So at this point, we have actually blended our animations and we actually need to implement these now. And we're going to be doing this inside of what's called an animation blueprint. An animation blueprint is essentially just going to allow us to blend between different animations or animation assets, depending on the value of some blueprints. Let's set it up. To create our animation blueprint is really straightforward. You can create this anywhere you like. For me, I'm going to go to my FBS assets and I'm going to go to my first person BP and blueprints folder. Inside of here, I'm going to right click and add a new animation blueprint. And again, I'm using the same skeleton as before, and I'm going to press create. And I'm going to give this a name, arms underscore anim BP. And then with this, double click on it to open it up. What we have here is our output pose, which is what the player is actually going to see. And to control this, we need to right click and create what's called a new state machine. This is just going to allow us to have animation states and switch between those states depending on the value of variables. So take the animation pose for that animation state machine and put it into the result. Right click and rename that state machine and call this state machine. And then double click on this to open it up. From here, we can start plotting out our functionality. To do this, really straightforward. We can drag out from entry and add a state, and we're going to call this locomotion. This is just going to be for our base movement. If we go ahead and press compile, there's currently no animation playing because we haven't put anything in here. So open up our locomotion, and what we can do with this, if we go to our asset browser, we can find our movement underscore BS and drag this in and hook it up to our result. And what you're going to see now is we've hopped over to that animation blend space that we've created, but it does need a speed variable. Getting the value for this speed variable is really straightforward and really easy to bring this in. We're just going to be referencing our player character that we already have, getting the velocity and doing some blueprint magic to convert that into a speed. Let's go and do that. The place where we're going to be doing this is in our main event graph for our animation blueprint. And under event blueprint update animation, so pretty much every single frame, we can cast to our first person character, which is just going to allow us to communicate to it. As the object, we are going to get the player character. But as first person character, what we can do is we can get the velocity. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we've got our velocity there. Then what we can do with this is simply use the vector length node. And this is going to allow us to convert this into speed. So I can take my vector length and I can promote this to a variable. And I'm going to give this the name speed in the bottom left hand corner there. So I know that's quite a bit of blueprint that I just did there, but let's just quickly run through that. So every single frame, we're going to cast to our character blueprint, which is just communication. And then with this, we're just going to be asking, hey, what's velocity? And then vector length is going to convert this into speed. And we've then just created a speed variable, which we can hook up to our blend space. So make sure your blueprint looks like this and your execution path goes along this line. So update animation, cast to and set the speed. If we go ahead and compile, go over to my locomotion state again, I can then take my speed, get a reference to it and hook it up to my speed in the bottom there and hit compile. Let's go ahead and test this. Testing this could not be easier. To do that, all we need to do is go over to our anim preview editor in the bottom right hand corner. With this, we can then adjust variables to see how it's going to affect our animation blueprint. Here, I've got my speed. And if I turn this up by simply just scrolling, you can see in the preview in the top left hand corner there, 
the animation is going to change and everything is blending. That means we are good to go. So let's go ahead and implement this into our character. To do this, we're just hopping over to our first person BP, blueprints and first person character. And then in our FBS arms in the components in the top left hand corner, what we're gonna do is instead of just having one animation, we're now gonna tell it, hey, use this animation and change between the different states or blend spaces depending on all of these values that we've got. So with that being said, go over to animation mode, go to use animation blueprint. And under our animation class, we can just go ahead and choose our newly created arms underscore anim BP. And we can press compile. Then what we're gonna do is simply just hop in. And if we see now, as we start moving, you can see we have those animations for our weapon. So it actually feels a lot more like movement. If you feel like the sprint animation is coming in too soon, all you need to do is just hop back over to our blend space for our movement and just adjust that walk so it happens a little bit later, just like that. Press play back in here and you can see it's only when we do that or we get quite fast, it starts playing that animation. That's everything for this video. What you should have by now is you have your weapon and you have your animation set up so that you're going in there when you move and you move faster, it's going to be moving a little bit quicker, which is awesome. This is the foundation for our movement for our shooter game. Feel free to go in and adjust some of these values in your blend space. If you have any questions about your shooter game or maybe you just want a little bit of help, be sure to join our Discord where we have over 5,000 like-minded Unreal Engine developers just like yourselves. The link for this is in the description down below. If you'd like to support more high quality training just like this, be sure to go ahead and check out our Patreon page, the link's in the description. There, you're going to be able to unlock exclusive perks such as early access to our videos, easy to use game templates, and live mentoring. Again, I'd like to say that we are gonna be doing so much more with this shooter game as we go throughout this course, so be sure to go ahead and dive over to the next video to get started. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.